Hello, I am Nicholas Mikalev from New York University Abu Dhabi. In this video, I will present research on online misinformation that I conducted in collaboration with Mihai Avram and Professor Filippo Menzer from Indiana University Bloomington and Professor Samir Patil from the University of Utah. Misinformation that is believed by many people can have serious consequences. Previous work has shown that people struggle to identify misinformation among the content they encounter online. To address this problem, we designed and deployed a game called Fakey to help people determine whether the news stories that they encounter online are from reputable or questionable sources. Fakey uses public APIs to extract articles from mainstream and low credibility sources. For mainstream news, we manually select 32 sources with a balance of moderate liberal, centrist and moderate conservative views. We chose low credibility sources based on flagging by various reputed fact-checking organizations, such as Snoops. We consider these sources as low credibility because they tend to publish fake news, conspiracy theories, clickbait, rumors, junk science and other questionable content. For instance, it has been found that 82% of tweets that link to articles from these sources make claims that are classified as misinformation. It is important to note that Fakey does not use a fixed set of labeled articles from mainstream and low credibility sources, rather, it shows current news articles retrieved in real time using public APIs. Players always obtain fresh content and never encounter the same article twice. As shown in the example, each article shown within Fakey consists of corresponding photo, headline, description, social engagement metric, and game controls. The value of the social engagement metric, that is the number of people who liked or shared the article, is randomly drawn such that roughly 69% of the articles display engagement values greater than 100, with roughly 3% showing values higher than 100,000. Players get the maximum number of points for sharing mainstream content or for fact-checking low credibility articles. Using a hint prior to taking an action halves the number of points. The goal of Fakey is to present the retrieved articles within a generic conceptual replica of a social media news feed. Therefore, the UI of Fakey mimics the appearance of Facebook or Twitter feeds for players who log into the game through these respective platforms. Each round of play consists of 10 news articles picked at random, 5 mainstream and 5 low credibility sources. Fakey is available within the iOS and Android app stores and can also be played through a web interface. After release, we advertised Fakey by announcing on social media, issuing a press release, publishing a conversation article, and promoting it at conferences, in keynote talks, and via word of mouth. We examined the analytics of player interactions collected over 19 months between May 2018 and November 2019. The game session data we analyzed involved 8,600 unique users who interacted with nearly 120,000 news articles, distributed roughly equally between mainstream and low credibility news sources. Most of the data is from players from the United States, Australia, United Kingdom and Canada. Even though Fakey shows a randomly generated engagement metric with each article, we found that the value of the metric can influence player decisions. When articles were accompanied by higher values of social engagement, players were more likely to like or share them and less likely to engage in fact-checking. In other words, metrics that indicate that an article has high social engagement makes users more invulnerable to influence of misinformation. We published this result in the Misinformation Review Journal. In this paper, we analyze whether fake can help people improve their news literacy. To conduct the analysis, to answer this question, we grouped players into three bins, short for those who played a single round of the game, that is, interacted with 1 to 10 articles, medium for those who played between 2 and 3 rounds, that is, interacted with 11 to 30 articles, and long for those who played more than 3 rounds, that is, interacted with more than 30 articles. For each player in these groups, we calculated accuracy by adding the number of interactions in which they shared or liked mainstream articles with the number of interactions in which they fact-checked low credibility articles, and dividing the sum by the total number of articles they encountered. 
We then separated the data for mainstream and low credibility articles to examine how good players were at identifying the displayed article correctly as credible or questionable, respectively. We found statistically significant improvement when comparing the short player group with medium and long player groups for both types of articles. However, the effect size is higher for mainstream articles than that for low credibility content. Comparing medium and long player groups revealed no statistically significant differences for either type of content. These results indicate that those who play more than one round are better at recognizing whether an article comes from a mainstream or low credibility source. However, the improvement in accuracy with longer gameplay could be attributed either to self-selection, that is, those who play multiple rounds have a predisposition to distinguish between mainstream and low credibility content, or the learning effects of faking, that is, those who play multiple rounds improving their news literacy because of the game. To help disentangle these two explanations, we conducted further analysis to check whether faking helps players learn to spot questionable content. First, we compared the accuracy of recognizing mainstream and low credibility news only for the first round, that is, for the first 10 articles encountered by each of the three player groups. Kruskal Wallace tests reveal statistically significant effects across the three player groups for mainstream articles, but not for low credibility ones. Postdoc and Whitney tests found statistically significant improvements when comparing the short player group with medium and long player groups, indicating that those who played for only a single round were worse at recognizing mainstream content during that round compared to the first round performance of the others who continued to play further rounds. The lower performance could potentially have led the players in the short group to quit playing, thus suggesting that self-selection might be a factor influencing the results. To understand whether those who proceeded to play more than one round experienced a learning effect, we build interactions for the medium and long player groups into those representing the first round, those included in rounds 2 and 3, and those for rounds 4 and higher. Since those in the medium player group played either 2 or 3 rounds, that group contained 2 bins, while the long player group contained 3 bins, because players in this group played more than 3 rounds. For mainstream content, we found statistically significant improvements for medium as well as long player groups. On the other hand, for low credibility content, we found a statistically significant decrease in accuracy for the medium player group. In other words, those who play up to three rounds of fakey share or like more articles from mainstream as well as low credibility sources. We did not find a correspondent statistically significant decrease in accuracy for players in the long group, that is, those who play more than three rounds, learn to share or like more mainstream content but avoid a similar increase in sharing or liking low credibility articles. These results demonstrate the learning effect of faking. Playing the game for more than three rounds improves the recognition of mainstream articles without affecting the detection of low credibility content. Yet players do not get better at recognizing questionable articles, which underscores the challenge of quickly dismissing such content as fake. This might also be affected by the fact that not all content from low credibility sources contains misinformation. Our findings show that a game that prompts people to fact-check can make them more careful about trusting online content. However, even when players were explicitly primed, more than a quarter of questionable content snuck through without verification. At the same time, players become more suspicious of legitimate content. Finding the right balance between excessive suspicion and insufficient scrutiny is an important challenge for future research. Since our results show that players who continue playing beyond the first round improve their performance, further research is needed to find techniques that can retain players who do not perform well in initial rounds. We want to acknowledge our colleagues for their help. This research was supported in part by Craig Newark Philanthropies, the Democracy Fund, and the Knight Foundation. In conclusion, we confirm that fake can enhance information evaluation skills and increase digital literacy. Our findings demonstrate that game-based approaches such as faking can be useful to help people avoid falling victim to misinformation. We conducted semi-structured interviews in which players described the game as useful, fun, and educational. For further detail, please consult the paper or feel free to contact us. We also encourage you to interact with fake yourself. Thank you for your attention.